She's a dancer who became an actor, who became a singer, who became a global icon. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're looking at the biggest reveals in Jennifer Lopez's halftime documentary. My whole life, I've been battling and battling to be heard, to be seen, to be taken seriously. For this list, we'll be looking at the most surprising, interesting things that we learned in the star's Netflix documentary. Which part of halftime did you find the most surprising? Let us know in the comments. Why she left home at 18. Growing up, musicals were a big part of Jennifer Lopez's life. Because I lived in the Bronx and it was very kind of like brick and gray and brown. I love the kind of escape into the musical world. West Side Story in particular was important to her. She admired Rita Moreno and felt represented as a Latina thanks to her work. Lopez knew that being a triple threat was something she was interested in pursuing. I wanted to be like her. I wanted to be on that stage too. I fell in love with dance. But when dance became her focus, education fell to the wayside, much to the dismay of her mother. This caused a blowout between the two and resulted in Lopez moving out at 18. Afterward, she got jobs anywhere she could, which eventually led to her part as a fly girl on In Living Color. Though she initially struggled to find representation as an actress, Lopez was determined to prove herself. I was like, no, I'm an actor. Seriously, no, I'm, I'm an actress. <laughs> They're like, you're a dancer. I'm like, no, I'm an actress. Obviously, it worked out. She was raised to be independent. As she talked about growing up, JLo made it clear that her family, which was full of strong women, taught her to be self-sufficient. She's grateful to her parents in particular for this lesson, which she said she still carries with her all these years later. They taught me to do everything on my own. And I live with that, those voices in my head. Her mother, Lupe Rodriguez, didn't subscribe to the idea that women should rely on a man to take care of them, which was a prevalent discourse then. So she made sure that her daughters understood that they didn't need to depend on anyone to provide for them. I always had the highest expectations of them. It wasn't to be critical, it was just to show you that you could do better. Per Rodriguez's own admission, she and Lopez didn't always get along back then. But the lesson stuck, and it was certainly a worthwhile one. I'm glad that she's strong and she's tough because you have to be to survive in this business. Judging American Idol helped her get through hard times. You know, you have those moments in this business where you're like, what's next? And will anything be next? In 2011, Jennifer Lopez and Mark Anthony went their separate ways. In halftime, the Let's Get Loud singer discussed how there was a period around then when she found herself struggling artistically. Her film career wasn't in the best place, and she was juggling raising two children who were only three when the split occurred. At 42, movie roles were not knocking down my door. And as I was getting back to work, I really felt like I didn't know what my value was anymore. Interestingly, Lopez was serving as a judge on American Idol at that time. She credited that job for helping audiences get a glimpse into her as a person and for helping her find a purpose. Ultimately, despite fears of not knowing what was awaiting her, she doubled down on perfecting her craft, giving us plenty more JLo greatness to admire. And I just felt I've got to work on my acting more, my singing more, my dancing more, my everything. I just need to be better in every way. How media treatment affected her. As Lopez found more and more fame and success in her career, the media scrutiny surrounding her increased. She was often framed as being someone who's difficult to work with or a diva. When her personality wasn't being criticized, it was her love life or her talent. Lopez admits that this all got to her and shook her confidence. I really believe a lot of what they said, which is I wasn't any good. I wasn't a good singer, I wasn't a good actress, I wasn't a good dancer, I wasn't good at anything. I just didn't even belong here. Why wouldn't I just go away? I feel like I was in this like really abusive, dysfunctional relationship. There was even a point where she wasn't sure if she should continue in the industry. As if all of that wasn't enough, the star also talked about the difficulty of dealing with the problematic jokes and narratives surrounding her body. It was hard when you think people think you're a joke, like you're a punchline. 
Luckily for us, she stayed true to herself and ended up being a groundbreaker in more ways than one. I had to really figure out who I was and believe in that and not believe anything else. The impact of the Oscars snub. In 2019, Jennifer Lopez made Waves in Hustlers, which she starred in and co-produced. It was a real, multi-dimensional, female-driven project that spoke to her. And when the film premiered, J.Lo's performance generated a lot of Oscar buzz. You listen to Vanity Fair, Jennifer Lopez dominates in a quintessentially American story. A Rotten Tomatoes says Hustlers first reviews Jennifer Lopez's Oscar-worthy. Oscar! But when the Academy Award nominations rolled around, her name was nowhere to be found, much to the disappointment of her entire team. Lopez admitted to having gotten her hopes up and definitely seemed saddened by the turn of events. But she was also clear that the motivation behind her work isn't to get awards, but rather to reach people on a human level. I do this to tell stories and to affect change and to connect with people and make them feel things because I want to feel something. Clearly, the snub was not going to stop her from doing what she does best. I'm going to keep working and I'm going to be unafraid to get loud and use my voice in the best way that I can. The Super Bowl halftime show's time constraint was a challenge. There were many rumors swirling in the lead up to Super Bowl 54 that Jennifer Lopez would be the halftime performer. And as we know, it ended up becoming a reality. This is something that I have been working for and hoping for for years. But it was announced that she would be co-headlining with Shakira. Now, there was no animosity between the two singers, but the decision itself wasn't unanimously beloved. It was an insult to say you needed two Latinas to do the job that one artist historically has done. The biggest issue was time. Throughout the documentary, we see Lopez concerned about the length of the performance because they weren't being given double the airtime despite being two people. We have no more six fucking minutes. We have 30 seconds of, each, of a song if we want. And if we take a minute, that's it. We got five left. She struggled to construct the show in a way that would allow her to fit everything in and make it great. Still, with a lot of hard work, Lopez and Shakira found a way to make it work. It's a song. It has a build. I'm trying to give you something with substance. She wanted to make a statement at the Super Bowl. For her Super Bowl performance, Lopez felt it was crucial to send a message about how Latinos belong in the United States. Some of us have been here for years, and a lot of those people are just good people who are looking for the American dream. That's all they want. She notably decided to do that by incorporating Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA into the set. She even wanted the singer to appear before realizing that having her daughter Emmy sing the tune would be more impactful. Having young girls in cage-like structures refusing to be silenced was meant to further emphasize the point. I said, you look right down that camera and you tell every little girl in the world to get loud and to never, ever back down from bringing light to injustice. What's more, she wanted to showcase her American and Puerto Rican identities through a dual-sided flag. To top it all off, Lopez also explained that the performance was about championing women. The star set out to make a big, multifaceted statement, and we think she succeeded. It made me realize that I have a responsibility to not be quiet, to not just leave the politics to everybody else. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. The NFL tried to change a key part of her halftime show set. We just mentioned how Lopez made it a priority to infuse her performance with deeper meaning. But apparently, not everyone was on board. And every day I turn around with somebody giving me some negative energy about, oh, we can't have this, we can't have that. She and her team were told that NFL executives weren't okay with the cages she was planning on featuring in her performance. This was only a day before she was set to take the stage. Per her manager, Benny Medina, the order to remove that element had been issued from the league's highest authority. Still, JLo remained firm and refused to change the plan. I'm facing the biggest crossroads of my life, you know, to be able to perform on the world's biggest stage 
But to take out the cages and sacrifice what I believe in would be like never being there at all. She decided to stand tall in her beliefs and fight for human rights. She did just that. And the final result was a Super Bowl halftime show that won't soon be forgotten. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.